Now, while Swift GPI has significantly boosted transparency and speed of cross-border payments, there are still challenges. Absolutely. There's unstructured, incomplete or inconsistent data produced, for example, by free format input options, which in turn can lead to poor quality information that might be misinterpreted and require manual intervention. The key lies in moving to better quality data in payments and implementation of the international ISO 20022 standards. We're joined now from Virginia by Saqib Sheikh, Global Head of ISO 20022 at SWIFT. Good afternoon to you, Saqib. It's very good to have you here on Cybos TV. I mean, let's start with ISO 20022, and I'm rather proud of myself because I was able to pronounce it. But look, it does sound extremely cryptic to the uninitiated, but what is it really and why is it relevant for financial institutions well, thank you for having me here. And, and yes, when people hear of ISO 20022, it can come across as very cryptic. In very simple terms, it's nothing more than the next generation standard for how you speak to one another when you want to conduct not only payments, but securities, trade, or any other type of business with your counterparties in the financial world. Now, in the context of SWIFT, where we operate a global financial network with 11,000 institutions, in more than 200 countries and jurisdictions, exchanging bilaterally more than 30 million transactions a day, people tend to think that happens because we operate a common technical network and everybody's on the same technical protocol. But in reality, what's more important is that everybody on that network speaks the same language, a language that is common, equally understood, and there's limited room for misinterpretation by uh, counterparties. Yeah. Now, the current generation of that language is what we refer to as SWIFT standards, SWIFT MT standards. Yeah? Um, the issue is that these were designed several decades ago when computing resources were limited. Disk space, network bandwidth, compute power were a limited commodity. As a consequence, these MTs are fixed length, they're limited in size, they're flat file, so there's no concept of grouping of data. Um, and it has limitations. Also, over the years, to afford flexibility, we've allowed unstructured versions of these SWIFT MT standards on the network, and people have begun to default to use those unstructured message types. Yeah, um, All this means is that these messages exchanged on the network um, are, are limited. They're not fit for purpose anymore. Um, and, and they're being exchanged in a way that is error prone and um, causes a lot of manual intervention. ISO 20022, by contrast, is a new generation of that standard. Um, people often uh, have a misconception that ISO 20022 is the XML messages, uh, which is a common way of implementing that standard. But really, it is first and foremost a common data dictionary. So, whether you're initiating a payment from a corporate, whether you're clearing a payment in a domestic clearing system, whether you're conducting correspondent banking, everybody understands who is a debtor, who's a debtor agent, who are intermediaries, and who are the ultimate parties behind that transaction. So there's, there's a common language through the transaction chain. Yeah? It's also a recipe for making new financial standards. Yeah? So it's not a static standard that, that is done and dusted today. It, it's extensible and it grows. Yeah? Um, and finally, it is a collection of messages. Yeah? Um, and it's a collection of messages not only for B2B transactions, but also retail transactions and also in the card space. So it affords more space, more flexibility, um, and it's, it's fit for purpose today, but it's also uh, future proof. You talk of the need of a structure, perhaps, to this new language. Tell us more about SWIFT's role in this new standard. Are you really leading from the front in trying to bring this together to, be, to work across the, the industry in the future? Yeah, we probably play three roles in this space. The first is we're the registration authority for this standard. So this standard does not belong to SWIFT. It belongs to the community. Yeah. Um, and our job is to facilitate a change management process. Whenever there's a need to update the standard, we will go through a consultation process with the community, gather requirements, and make sure updates are made in a timely manner. That's job number one. Job number two is we're evangelists for harmonization of standards. Yeah. 
So um, if you want to use this standard in a particular context, in a particular community, there is a market practice that needs to be defined. And we help communities define that market practice. We also offer tools. This standard has to live somewhere. It has to be maintained somewhere. It needs a, a space where you can test and try them out. And then you have to implement them. A lot of communities are coming from proprietary or these MT standards. They need translation capabilities to get to the new way of operating. And we offer tools in that space. Yeah. Um, more specifically in cross-border payments, in September 2018, after consultation with our community, uh, we together decided that we need to move correspondent banking to this next generation of standards. So our job is to facilitate adoption of better data in correspondent banking. So that's really what we do. And I understand that ISO 20022 is going to underpin the enhanced platform of SWIFT. How is that going to work? Yeah, so I think at Cybos, a lot of people would have heard about the new strategy of SWIFT. Um, we aspire to enable instant and frictionless transactions, regardless of where you are in the world, account to account. Um, to make that happen, we're going to be evolving and enhancing the platform of SWIFT with new transaction management services. Um, what we do today uh, is that SWIFT operates as a digital mailman. We take copies of transactions and we shuttle them from party A to B, B to C, and so on and so forth. What tends to happen in that type of process is that you're constrained by the capabilities of your counterparties. If they're not using the latest version of software or the latest features, if they're not able to process certain types of data, ultimately your clients don't get fast and frictionless transactions, yeah? So Swift is going to now be maintaining a golden copy of the transaction in the platform. And when we maintain that golden copy, it's going to be based on the richest format possible, which is ISO 20022. So this rich data record of the full transaction end to end is going to get past this limitation of least common denominator you're no longer constrained by that one party in the chain that, that is limited and not able to process as they should. Um, and, and so ISO 2022 will, will enable us to do that. Now you've mentioned SWIFT's role is, very, is kind of as, as evangelists in this, in this area. I'm gonna give you an opportunity to evangelize, so to speak. When SWIFT users look to implement this new language, how should they go about it? Yeah, it's a good question. So, so the risk is that people look at this as a technical change, yeah? And they implement last mile translation capabilities to get past the hurdle and speak this new language on the network of Swift. That's probably the wrong way to think about it, yeah? You need to fundamentally think of it, about it as an opportunity for better service for your clients. If I have better data, better party data, I should be able to screen better and faster with fewer manual interventions. So that's faster transactions for your clients. With better regulatory reporting data, you know, when I take a transaction into a particular jurisdiction, I need to report to local regulators, what is this transaction about? Why is it coming into my country? How's it gonna be used? Yeah, that reporting can sometimes take time. Um, and if you're missing bits of information, you're not able to do that. But now that you can carry that in the transaction itself, you're going to be able to report quicker and have faster processing. And lastly, it's all about better remittance information. Today, when payments come across, the intent of the payment, why am I making the payment in the first place, often comes separate from that transaction. And clients have this big job of reconciliation. Okay, I've got these funds in my account, but what were they actually for? Um, and trying to do that reconciliation takes time and is inefficient. Um, now, in the payment itself, you get all the remittance information coming together. So that one payment is for multiple invoices. And some of those invoices need to be adjusted. And there need to be credit notes that, that need to be applied. All that comes together, and you get faster reconciliation. These are real things that improve the lives of your clients. So when you look at ISO 2022, you should begin with, what can I do better for my clients, number one? And number two, consider it a strategic change. This new bit, these new bits of data, they need to be spoken not only on the SWIFT network, they need to be able to be processed within your institution. So your ent entire technology stack needs to be able to speak this new language. And that's, that's gonna take time. And it's a mindful change that needs to be planned out. 
So it's not technical. It should be business driven um, and be thought of much more strategically than some some institutions may consider it. OK, so Keith, we're going to have to leave it there. But thank you so much for taking us through ISO 20022. I think I pronounced it correctly. And thank you as well for making the time just to talk to us and uh, really give us a pretty comprehensive description of, of what it means. It's one of the best descriptions I've Absolutely. heard in a long time, actually. Yeah, yeah, it was very succinct, actually. Very.